I talk to a lot of people that think now is not a great time to buy a house. Let's talk about why that might not be true. Hi, I'm Erin Johnson, Outstanding Ohio's most resourceful realtor, and I have a passion for helping people buy and sell houses here in Northeast Ohio. So um, I want to tell you, actually now may be one of the best times to buy a house due to several key reasons, including one that you might not even be aware of or thinking about. So let's talk about that. Typically when I'm talking to people, I feel like they're waiting for something to happen. And I, I've narrowed the list of five things that I tend to hear on this is what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for rates to drop. I'm waiting for prices to drop. I'm waiting for more inventory or to find the right house. I'm waiting to save more money or I'm waiting to improve my credit score. So let's dive into those five reasons and um, talk about ways around them that, that might actually mean that now is a better time to buy than you might even be thinking. So reason number one is waiting for the rates to drop. Yes, um, the rates are high, higher than they've been, historically not very high, but many buyers are waiting for the interest rates to drop. They're sitting on the sidelines just waiting. And here's the thing, if rates drop, guess what's gonna happen? More buyers are gonna come into the market, which means more competition, which probably means higher prices. So if you can get in now, at the existing rates and the rates go up, you'll be glad that you got in before they went up. But if they go down, you can always refinance and you will have probably gotten a house for a better price than when the rates go down and more competition enters the market. So my advice, if you're waiting for rates to drop, is first of all, focus more on the down payment and your monthly mortgage than you are on the rate. Because if you can find a house that meets your criteria that you can afford now with that down payment and that monthly mortgage, don't worry so much about the rates. You might have heard, date the rate, marry the house, find the house you like that you can afford now. You always might have the opportunity to refinance and lower your payment later. Two, ask your lender about refinancing fees because some are offering programs to refinance within a certain period of time for free or maybe for reduced rates. So if you think that's the path you're likely headed down, like, okay, I'll accept this rate for now, but I really want to be able to refinance in the next couple years if the rates drop, ask them what that's going to cost you and, if, and, and talk to a couple lenders to see if there's one offering a special on that. And then lastly, consider some alternative lending options. If you're really sensitive to the rate, you can look at adjustable rate mortgages or a lower um, term period for, for your loan. There are some ways to get some lower rates. And of course, you can also shop around to find the best rate. So that's uh, reason number one, waiting for the rates to drop. A close second is waiting for price to drop. And um, yeah, there's a lot of buyers out there waiting for the prices to drop or waiting for the bubble to burst. And there really is no guarantee that's gonna happen. And if you look at prices really a factor of supply and demand, the supply, the inventory, the amount of houses for sale is so historically low that it's gonna take a significant increase in that in order for it to make a difference in the prices. And that's just not looking like it's gonna happen anytime soon. I don't have the crystal ball, but unless there's a significant change in supply, there's not likely going to be uh, a change in price. The prices are likely to remain pretty stable or possibly even increase if, uh, like I said, the rates drop and more buyers enter the market. So my advice, if you're waiting for prices to drop, is one, you could be waiting a long time. Um, if you buy now and the prices go up, you're going to be glad you got in. If you buy now and the prices go down over time, if they're probably going to come back up, and at least you'll be living in a home that you love. So don't try to, you know, time this like the stock market. If you find the house, again, similar to the rates, if you find the house that you like for a, a, a mortgage that you can afford and you have the down payment, then now is a good time for you. Don't, don't worry so much about the, the total price. Uh, if you are super price sensitive, look at houses that have been on the market for more than a couple of weeks. They are probably more motivated sellers, probably gonna have less competition, more likely that you can get the, the house for asking price or even below. So that could get you a better price. And then lastly, um, maybe consider like what I would call livable fixer upper. Find a house you can live in for now that needs some work that you can do over time as your budget allows. So that would get you in now at a, at a lower price and you can expand or renovate later as you can afford to do so. Okay, reason number three, and this is a big one too, waiting for more inventory or waiting to find the right house. Yes, the options are low right now. There's not a lot of houses listed and some buyers are waiting for that perfect house. Um, but again, the inventory is not expected to increase anytime soon. Sellers are holding on to their low interest rates. 
new construction is, is not happening at a very rapid pace, so there's not likely to be significant more inventory anytime soon. So my advice, if you're waiting for inventory options or you're waiting for the perfect house, first and foremost, you need to hire an agent and get pre-approved with your lender so that you are ready when you do find that house, that you're ready to make a move because you don't want to be caught off guard that all of a sudden the house of your dreams comes up and you got to figure out who you're going to work with and get pre-approved. And by the time you do all that, the house could be under contract and you might have missed it. So I know it's a little bit of chicken egg here, but you really do need to have your your people ready, your, your realtor and your lender, so that when you find it, you're ready to go. Um, second, be flexible in your search criteria. You might have to loosen up the area, the square footage. Um, you might have to you know, think outside the box a little bit. Um, be willing to, to sacrifice on some of your um, wish list items. You know, stay focused on your must-haves and just know that find the house that works for you for now. It might not be your dream home. This might have to be a stepping stone of it getting you in the right direction of owning a home or owning the next home, but it might not be your forever home if you can't find that at this time. So maybe loosen up your, your search criteria and be flexible with that. Third, consider building. It is very costly and it can be hard to find land as well as new invent uh, existing inventory, but at least then you're getting exactly what you want. If you're gonna be in it for a while, then, and you're willing to pay a little bit more, that could be an option for working around the inventory issue. And lastly, and this is really probably the most important thing, is to be patient because it is gonna take some time with the, with the limited options of inventory. But don't get caught up in the numbers about how many houses there are for sale because you're only looking for one house. You only need one. So there is always one house for sale and you're gonna find it. It's just a matter of time. Um, and so make sure to allow plenty of time in your timeline, particularly if you're renting. You know, if you just signed your next year lease, it's not too soon to start looking because it could take that long to go through the process, find what you want, get it under contract, get the possession and so forth. Okay, reason number four is that you're waiting to save up more money. And gosh, it is undoubtedly an expensive time. It's expensive, prices are high for houses, the rates are high, it's also expensive for everything else you're dealing with in your life. So I get that it's hard to save money and to be ready for this. However, there may be more options than you realize that could make it possible for you to afford a house now, um, including like lower down payment amounts or, um, grant programs and things like that. So my advice here, if you're like, well, I just don't have enough money yet, talk to a lender about what programs are out there. There are programs as low as zero to 5% down payment. You don't have to have 20% like some people think. There are grant programs for new new home buyers. There's grant programs for certain locations that you're buying in. If you're in a certain profession, like doctors, um, teachers, there could be grant programs for you or lower interest rates available to you. So. Um, at least have that conversation to see what your options are. Second piece of advice is put, you know, consider putting down less than 20% so that you don't have to have as much money up front. Again, you don't have to have that, like some people think you have to have the 20%. You don't necessarily have to have 20% to get a loan. Third, you can ask the seller to pay a portion or some of your, or all of your closing costs as part of your offer and that would save you cash uh, that you would need at closing. So talk to your, your real estate agent about how you can write closing costs into the offer. And then lastly, talk to a financial advisor so that they can really help guide you on your financial situation, on how you could make this work given your current financial situation and the programs that, that you learned about from your lender and, and so forth. Okay, the last, waiting for credit scores. Yep, that's, that's legit. Like you have to have a minimum credit score to be able to qualify for a loan, but those uh, credit scores vary by lender. And yes, the better credit score you have, the lower your interest rates are, but that doesn't mean that there might not be options. So don't let that less than perfect credit score hold you back. Um, my advice here is that, le again, at least meet with a lender to understand you know, how your score stacks up against where they want it to be if you do qualify for something or where, what you need to do to get to where you would, would qualify for something and they can help you with that credit repair issues. And two, shop around for lenders because again, their minimums vary by lender. So maybe there is a lender out there that would be willing to lend to you it, with your current credit score. Um, the other thing I think people are afraid of sometimes is that hard credit pool. And a lot of lenders do not do a hard credit pool to do your pre-approval. So you can ask that as well. So don't uh, be afraid of calling them that that's gonna hurt your credit just by talking to them.
Okay, so um, those are those are the top five reasons I feel like I hear people saying that they're like sitting out on the sidelines, like not ready to buy. But another reason I think that um, buyers hesitate is because they're overwhelmed. They're overwhelmed. They don't know where to start. If they're a buyer, maybe they're just like, oh my gosh, this market seems really crazy. Like, I don't think I can handle this. I don't want to compete with all this stuff. It just doesn't, it doesn't feel good to me. Um, if you're an existing homeowner, you're probably worried about, gosh, if I sell, where would I go? I hear that a lot. Um, they don't want to sell their house and then be homeless and not have another house lined up. So that's what I'm here for, to help you strategize, to help you understand the process, to make it smooth, to make it as stress-free as, free as possible so you know what to expect and how to navigate this market. Um, but there, I mentioned at the beginning a reason that you might not even be thinking about that why now is really a great time to buy, and that is that there are changes coming to the way buyers agents work with buyers and the way buyers agents get paid. There was a lawsuit with NAR, the National Association of Realtors, that affects that. I did a separate video on this. Please watch the, the NAR settlement, how buyers agents get paid so that you can fully understand it. But don't fear, like don't, don't read the headline of like, oh my gosh, it seems like this is saying now I have to pay my buyer's agent and I was already worried about not having enough money and the prices being high and the rates and this and that. I better not work with an agent because we, have ways to help you get that paid through the transaction. So don't, um, this is double negative here, don't not talk to an agent because you th you're afraid that you can't afford it. At least come have that conversation. We can explain to you what the options are, how these changes are, are working, how we expect it to happen. Um, but these go into effect August 17th. So if you're on the fence and you've been thinking about buying and just not ready to pull the trigger, this could be a very good reason why now is a good time to buy because then you don't have to worry about those changes. It's basically status quo for the next month. And again, you can get in before the rates drop and competition increases, which is probably going to increase the price. And if you're worried about having enough money or having the right credit score, talk to a lender. There could be options you're not even aware of. And again, the inventory thing is, is a bit personal, but like if you find the house that you like and you can afford it, then now is the right time for you. So don't worry so much about timing the market and when is like the best time to buy. When is the best time for you? That's practical, that works for your life, for your finances, for your situation. And that's what I'm here to help you out with, to really help navigate what makes sense for you in your individual situation. So there you have it, the top five reasons why now is really could be a great time to buy. Um, even though those reasons maybe you may be holding you back right now, there's ways around it and through it, and that's what I'm here to help you out with. You have this opportunity to get in now before the prices go up, before the rates potentially go up, um, before the NAR settlement takes effect, and I can put you in touch with trusted lenders to help you through this. Or, or even a financial advisor if needed to see what you qualify for and the best way to plan your purchase. Um, the truth is, again, there's no perfect time to buy. It's what's right for you. And so what are you waiting for? It's never too soon to talk to me. Even if you think this is a year or two out, let's chat now about your specific situation and what to expect and how to prepare for that and how I can help you. Call me for a free buyer uh, consultation, no obligation. Let's just chat. 330-227-4355. Thank you.